such an important part in this time. Go to my people Israel and say to them to build my temple. Ja, es ist ähm, sehr bedrückend und sehr äh, schlimm, was Martin Luther hier formuliert. You know, when we talk about this breakdown of the, this world governing body, this liberal international order that the United States was the principal order of, the driver of for the last 75 years, the article I'm going through, it points out that the diminishing influence of the United States in the world and the reactions of countries like China and Russia. I mean, imagine China and Russia sitting here just uh, drooling over the fact that the United States is in a very weak position right now. We seem weak to the world, even though we have the most powerful military on the planet. I mean, imagine China and Russia, they see it as an opportunity, right, to advance their own interests. And the traditional idea of a U.S.-led rules-based international order is facing challenges and is perceived as self-serving by many outside of our Washington allies. And with that said, prophecies are being fulfilled. I mean... What it's doing, it's emboldening our enemies, and it's making our allies very skeptical. Well, folks, prophecies are being fulfilled just like Scripture foretells. Let's talk about it. I've heard some people talk lately about Ezekiel 38, um, Zechariah 12, 13, 14, uh, the Armageddon, all these different wars, uh, Psalm 83, and I've talked about it recently, but I want to make sure you understand. The next war to occur on God's prophetic timeline is the Sixth Trumpet War in Revelation 9, 13 through 21. Here's something I want to make a, a clarification on. Anybody who teaches a pre-tribulation rapture, we believe in a post-tribulation, I believe the Bible teaches a post-tribulation rapture. So the church is going to be here all the way through, and the events of the, uh, the, the seals, trumpets, and vials do not all have to occur during that final seven-year period. I know that's a big teaching out there, but that's simply a mis misinterpretation of Scripture. So when somebody teaches a pre-tribulation rapture, they cannot say that the sixth trumpet war in Revelation 9, 13 through 21 is the next event on God's prophetic timeline or the peace agreement. But they specifically cannot talk about Revelation 9, 13 through 21 because... If you believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, then you believe the church has to be gone before that war can take place. So, <clears throat> I've heard people talking lately 
about all these different wars and different scenarios that could happen, but they'll say Ezekiel 38, Zechariah 12, 13, 14, Revelation 16, um, and 19, uh, the, uh, Psalm 83. But anybody that believes in a pre-tribulation rapture, they will never mention Revelation 9, 13 through 21 because it's the sixth trumpet war. Because that has to happen, they say, during the final seven years. So the one war they should be talking about, they can't talk about because of their ideology. And so that's a danger. We've got to be able to look at the entire Bible and say, okay, what does this whole thing say here? I want to understand the entire scope. And once you understand the Bible's not written in chronological order, that there is a post-tribulation rapture, and that the first, the seals, uh, the first four seals have already been opened, the first five trumpets have already occurred, then you can understand, wow, the seals, trumpets, and vials are just sets of events that happen, stories that lead up to the second coming of Jesus Christ and the battle of Armageddon. Then you can get the big scope of the book of Revelation and teach it all the way through. So I want to make sure that we kind of um, clear up some uh, a misinterpretation of Scripture here because that's why it's important. Some people would say, well, you know, the teaching in uh, pre- or post-trib, it really doesn't matter. It's not a salvation issue. I agree with you there. But when it comes to the timing of some of these things and uh, preparing different people for things that will come along and some different teachings, and I, you've, we've got to get the timeline right. It's in there for a reason. Prophecy is about 30% of the entire Bible. And it is meant to be understood. Now, the, when we talk about this war that's coming, and again, the, the stage is being set for the end time, for the coming of the Antichrist, this coming world government, the coming world religion. There will come a time, because right now we're kind of ambling along with this liberal international order, the, the, the new world order, this world government. But Antonio Guterres is a very frustrated individual. He's the current Secretary General of the United Nations. He's upset. He's frustrated. How many times over the last few years have we heard him talk about the United, the United Nations doesn't have the teeth that we want? Well, when he says teeth, what's he talking about? He's not talking about his pet schnauzer. He's talking about the United Nations doesn't have the enforcement methods, the dictatorial powers, the totalitarian, it's not the totalitarian regime we want. We, we, want to, we want to be able to dictate to people around the world, and they do what we say. Not to, and we, we have the ability to force them to do it, rather than just passing a resolution in the UN General Assembly, and then one of the Security Council members can just veto it, and then we're stuck again. We can't help anything. We're a paper tiger. That's what the United Nations is right now, and it's driving Antonio Guterres, the current Secretary General, insane. So he's saying, we need teeth. We need teeth. We need enforcement methods. We need to be able to dictate and people bow down to our edicts. So they have not had the big enough crisis to get the nations of the world to do that. Now that's why I laid out the scenario earlier of after World War I, we had the League of Nations. After World War II, we had the United Nations. Two efforts to a world governing body. So what do you think the crisis is going to be that's big enough to get the nations to buy into a fully functioning world governing body? I want you to consider the climate crisis that they're trying to sell to people around the world. This huge propaganda scheme, the scare tactics, all these different things totally based on a hoax, everybody, of human-induced global warming, which leads to climate change, which is causing uh, heat waves and polar vortexes of 20 below zero. They say it causes both of them. And that we need to change from natural gas and coal-fired power plants to solar and wind and all this stuff. All that is based on is propaganda from the United Nations to redistribute the wealth of the world. It's socialism. But they've got to have a crisis, a crisis. Well, the climate crisis 
is not a big enough and bad enough crisis, because it's a propaganda, number one. It's not a big and bad enough crisis to get the world to say, well, we'll yield up our sovereignty to a world governing body in the name of the climate crisis. The nations are not yielding to that. That's not the crisis that's going to do it, folks. There's got to be a bad enough crisis, and on the mind of these globalists, they know the crisis that it's going to take. World War I was the worst war prior to that in history. Just over 8 million killed. Now, there had been millions killed in other wars, but 8 million, think about that. It was called the Great War at the time. It was the first time that many different implements of war were ever introduced. It was horrific. But 8 million, just over 8 million, 8.2, 8.5 million. Well, they, they said, in, well, we need, a, we need the League of Nations. Didn't work. So, guess what? Need a bigger crisis, but we've got to have the United States involved. World War II comes along. Pearl Harbor happens. The United States is involved. We win two campaigns. War, League, uh, United Nations, the same year, folks, they signed the United Nations Charter. Al Harris was a communist spy. Many of you know all that already. Okay. The climate crisis isn't going to be it. All these other crises and propaganda... You know, um, Hillary Clinton never wasted a good crisis, right? Well, what do you think the crisis is going to be? Well, when I look to the Bible, I know the big crisis that's coming. On the heels of World War III, which is going to be Revelation 9, verse 13 through 21, that will be the entrance ramp to the Antichrist. Let me read it. Verse 13 states, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels bound in the great river Euphrates, for the, and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour a day, a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of mankind. And I heard the number of the army of the horsemen, and there were 200,000, 000, 000, a 200 million men army, and I heard the number of them. So, what question are we answering today? What's the world going to look like on the back end of World War III? This is World War III. It's highly likely that it's the next event to occur on God's timeline. So the question is, what will the world look like after World War III? Well, number one, the Bible tells us that there's going to be, right now there's a American-centered world governing body. The United Nations is here in New York. The United States has been the principal driver since 1945 with the United, with the United Nations Charter signing here in San Francisco. And we've been the driver behind it. We've been the world's policeman. Think about it. But that's not how it's going to stay. It's going to be European-centered. Listen to this. Revelation 13, 1 through 3. You understand in Daniel 7, he saw four beasts rising up out of the sea. A lion with eagle's wings, a bear, a four-headed leopard, and a ten-horned beast. They symbolize nations that would be on the earth at the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. The lion's Great Britain, the eagle's wings, the United States, the bear, Russia, the four-headed leopard, Germany, the ten-horned beast is the current European Union, the reborn Holy Roman Empire. Remember those symbols. In Revelation 13, 1 through 3, John said, this is 650 years later, and I stood up on the sand of the sea, and I saw a one single beast, a combo beast, not four beasts, a single combo beast, rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and, he had the, and on his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, Germany, feet as the feet of the bear, Russia, mouth as the mouth of the lion, Great Britain, and the dragon, gave, the dragon Satan, Gave him his power, seat, and great authority, not China. And, I, and so the ten horns of the ten horn beast is the European Union. And I saw one of his heads that were wounded unto death. The deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. So, the whole world's going to follow after this beast. A beast in Bible prophecy represents a kingdom or a nation. And I've, uh, we've ta learned in times past that multiple heads on a nation or on a beast represent the number of times a nation will rise and fall. So the prophecy from Daniel 7 
It says there's four beasts, a, a, a lion with um, a lion representing Great Britain, a bear, Russia, the eagle, the United States, leopard, Germany, ten horns of the ten horn kingdom representing the uh, countries of Europe. All of these, the reborn Holy Roman Empire, all of these folks, very important, are European countries. The end time world government will be a European centered world governing body. It's not going to be American centered. This is what's coming in the near future. This is Bible Prophecy 101. Okay? So we're answering the question, what's the world going to look like on the backside of World War III? World War III is coming. There's not one-tenth of one percent chance that it's not going to happen. It's going to happen. And these beasts from Daniel 7, which are separate beasts, they are they federalized. In the prophecy of Revelation 13, they've turned into one big combo beast. So, when we're answering the question, what's the world going to look like on the backside of this? We are going, remember I talked about the conflicts that led into a world governing body. And they don't have, they, the, the, right now, the United States seems very weak, which means the world government is very weak. And it, all of this is playing in together perfectly. I don't want it to happen. But the Bible says it's going to. So, the, the scenario I laid out before, on the back side of World War III, let's lay out what it's going to look like. It's going to be European-centered. The European-centered world governing body will be the power base of the Antichrist. How do I know that? Because the ten horns on the ten horn beast is European, uh, symbolizes the European Union. And the Bible says that the little horn, uprooted three horns, came up among them, became great, and began speaking great things. You learn later on in Daniel 7 that that is the Antichrist. Where does he come from? He comes from Europe. He does not come from the Middle East. You don't have to worry about that. And he's, that's going to be the power base of the world governing body. That will also be the power base of the false prophet. It's the reborn Holy Roman Empire. From the time of Charlemagne in 800 AD when Pope Leo III crowned the, uh, Charlemagne the first emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, the, European, the um, Holy Roman Empire was always ran by the most powerful political leader in Europe, which was um, Charlemagne in the beginning, and the most powerful religious leader from Rome, which was always the Pope, ever, all the way through, for well over a thousand years. Well, that's the way it's going to be ran just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ. The most powerful political leader from Europe is going to be the Antichrist, and the most powerful religious leader from Rome will be the false prophet. Whoever the Pope is at the time of the Antichrist will be the false prophet. And he will be the leader over a vast uh, international false religious system. Okay. Now, that's how the world's going to be ran in the future. After World War III. Right now, it's not happening. The, 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 the international community, the world government looks weak and anemic. They're trying to establish their world global um, economic sanctioning system. They're trying to establish a world government. They're trying to establish a world religion. But there's not been a big enough crisis to get the world to buy into all this hoopla and this propaganda that they're trying to sell everybody. But once we have the absolute massive big enough crisis, then all the world, most of the world, will willingly yield their sovereignty to this world governing body. It's not going to be climate change. Most of the nation, a lot of the nations are not buying into that. And so it's not going to be that. What's the big crisis on the scene? The Bible says it's going to be World War III. And there are article after article today that's talking about changing the new, the liberal international order on the backside of a world of a world war or a wartime scenario. Folks, this is exactly what the Bible says is going to happen. We can watch it seeing in the in the future scenario. Now, also on the back side of this World War III scenario is going to be the peace agreement between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Now think about this. We wondered for years, which one's going to be first? Let's see, the, the World War or the peace agreement. Can't prove it scripturally. Well, now I'm sitting here watching it, and is it possible, I'm speculating, but could it be possible 
that the Israelis-Palestinian conflict starts the war, and if it did, can you imagine the pressure on the backside of a World War III? Can you imagine the pressure that the international community would put on Israel and the Palestinians to capitulate, to sign an agreement, sign a, create a two-state solution, allow the Jews living out in the Judean area, the, the uh, West Bank, to live out there as a Jewish minority, place the Temple Mount under a sharing arrangement, allow Jewish, the, the Jews to build their third temple, and, but they, they can't ever settle on Jerusalem, so we got, we're going to leave Jerusalem till the end. We're going to put that off. Let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Let's go ahead and get everything we can signed onto a deal. And the Antichrist, a leader from Europe, is influential as one of the many leaders in getting that peace agreement signed on the backside of World War III. What else has been able, has, uh, has been able to make the Israelis and the Palestinians uh, compromise so much, or at least Israel compromise enough to where they would allow a two-state solution to be created? Nothing. There's no, there have been no negotiations that have even come remotely close to that. Okay. What do you think the, the, the cataclysmic event's going to be? It's not going to be climate change. Uh-uh. It's going to be World War III type situation. Think about it. All, on the back side of World War III, all this stuff is going to kick off, and we're only going to have so much time left, folks, before the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's what's coming. The, and once that peace agreement's signed, now I don't know how far between the war and the peace agreement, that, there, how much time there is in between that. It could be immediately. It could be a year or two. I don't know that. But once that peace agreement signed, that has the five biblical characteristics, we started the final seven years to the second coming of Jesus Christ in the Battle of Armageddon, and then this whole thing wraps up. That's the, that's the seventh trump in Revelation 11. At the last trump, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. The Battle of Armageddon happens. And we are, the rapture occurs, we have the, the um, we're changed from mortal to immortal, and we rule and reign as kings with priests with him for a thousand years. So what does that mean? We're staring this thing right in the face. You say, well, are you guaranteeing that uh, the Hamas-Israel situation is going to lead to World War III? No, I'm not. I do not know that. I know World War III is coming. I can prove that scripturally, and the prophecies always come to pass. However, if you look at the current scenario with Iran surrounding Israel, understanding Mahdiism, and that Iran is preparing the world for the coming of the Mahdi, and they need to get rid of Israel and the United States for that to happen, then you understand that this current situation is never going to go away. It's been, they've kind of been at war ever since the Ayatollahs took over, in the late 70s. But now, look at how the thing has escalated. While I was in Israel, one day after Turing, it was on a October 7th, on a Saturday, on the Sabbath, they invaded and they, it, they, Israel suffered the worst terrorist attack in the history of their nation, folks. And so it's unprecedented times and it's not going to go away until something happens to Iran. Let's say they completely defeat ISIS. There's still Hezbollah. There's still the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. There's still the Houthis in Yemen. When does it go away? Well, I can tell you right now, it's not going to go away until they do something about Iran. And when they go to Iran, that could be World War III. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't. Maybe this conflict will go away in a few months, and it takes a while. But man, Iran is not going to stop badgering and trying really to destroy Israel. Think about the situation that's going on. Read the news. And so we need to consider what's the world going to look like on the back side of this. Now, obviously, I don't believe scripturally that the country of Jordan, the country of Israel, and that the United States will be fully engaged with the world governing body. Because the Bible says that we stand with Israel, Revelation 12, 14, the eagle stands with Israel and protects her against the serpent, which is the world governing body, all the way to the end. So, 
But most of the world will completely follow after that world governing body. Folks, the stage is being set right now for these events to occur. People are looking at this current liberal international order and saying, this is horribly weak, disintegrating. We've got to do something. We've got to have a dictatorial world governing body. And the event, it looks like, that will make that happen is just around the corner with World War III, setting the stage truly for the coming Antichrist. God bless as you prepare for the times just ahead.